Hey, hey, what you say, food family? Mike here, and welcome back to the channel for another great culinary adventure. Today we're headed north of the border to visit our friends in Canada and stealing a recipe right out of their very own cookbook. I'm talking about poutine, but we're gonna make it grub on grub style. I'm talking beef short ribs, blistered chichito peppers, garlic herb cheese curds over a bed of fries, topped with gravy from the cooking liquids of those beef short ribs, you won't know what to do with yourself. So whether you're new to the poutine party or just want to learn a new traditional twist on a classic favorite, stick around and I'll show you how it's done. Let's get cooking. All right, folks, as you can see in front of me, I got the main attraction of today's ultimate poutine recipe in front of me. We're talking about the beef short ribs. We're going to be cooking these in the pressure cooker today just for the sake of time. But, of course, you can put these in a slow cooker with the same liquids and everything else that we're going to do with these. Put them in there before you head off to work. Let them go 8 to 10 hours. They'll come out just as good. You'll be able to come home and finish this poutine recipe off in a matter of minutes. But like I said, for the sake of time today, we're going to be doing these in the pressure cooker. So the first step is to season these with salt and pepper, and we're going to sear them off in our pressure cooker on saute mode for three to four minutes just to put a nice brown crust on them and start our first level of flavor. All right, you saw in that previous clip, we seared off our beef short ribs. I did them in batches, not to overcrowd the pan. Set them off to the side for now. The next step we're gonna do in our hot pressure cooker is saute off our veggies, our mirepoix, onions, carrots, and celery. Now you can rough chop these. We're not gonna be using them later for anything. Use leftover ends and bits and pieces. It adds a lot of flavor without a lot of hassle. So I'm gonna saute these in the hot instant pot. I'll probably add a touch more avocado oil, just keep everything well seasoned. Once everything is sauteed up here a little bit, we'll add some fresh smashed garlic cloves. Give that a minute until it becomes aromatic, and we'll finish that off with some tomato paste. And then we'll be right back for the next step. Alright folks, you saw in that previous step, we just sauteed those veggies for a couple minutes just to start to break them down. We added those smashed garlic cloves for a bit of aromatics and finished off with some tomato paste. Now it's time for my favorite part of every recipe and that's to deglaze the pan using some red wine. We want to scrape up all those bits and pieces, get that delicious fine flavor out of there. So we want to make sure we use some liquids to pull those up off the bottom of the pot. Now like I said, today we're going to be using red wine. Of course we don't put anything in our cooking that we don't drink at home ourselves. So let's give it a taste test and make sure it's proper for this recipe. Delicious as always. We're gonna deglaze this pot with about a cup of red wine, scrape up those bits. We'll come back for the next step. All right, we got all those delicious bits of fawn scraped up off the bottom of our pot with those veggies. Let's return our short ribs to the pot and just sit them right on top of those veggies. All right, we're gonna stack those in there, however you make them fit. Next step we wanna do is top these off with some beef stock. All right, I use about two cups of beef stock there. It's almost to the top of the ribs. They're not completely covered. It's not a big deal. Everything's getting pressure cooked. I'm gonna finish off with a couple sprigs of fresh rosemary. Now we'll put the lid on our pressure cooker, seal the vent, and let those cook for 45 minutes. Now during that time frame, we're gonna go ahead and make our fries and blister those shishito peppers. Today I'm just going to be using the air fryer for my fries. You can of course bake or deep fry your own fries. And for the shito peppers, I will show you that step when we come right back. 
All right, folks, our short ribs have started cooking in the pressure cooker. They got 45 minutes to go, so we can turn our attention to the rest of our poutine ingredients. First thing I want to talk about today is the shishito peppers. Now, these peppers are actually native to Japan, and I don't know how familiar you are with them, but I'll try to get a good close-up picture for you. They're not hot at all, except for 1 in 10. Now, you can eat 9 of these all day long. It'll be like taking a bite of a bell pepper. Nice, sweet, smooth, delicious pepper. That tenth one, it's got a bite and it'll kick you in the ass. It'll remind you that you're still alive. And I'm not talking major hot. It's like taking a bite of a pickled jalapeno or something. It's just going to burn your mouth a minute and you'll be on your way. But that's what makes this such a great topper for poutine because, you know, you might get that kick of heat. You might not. It's a great flavor either way. And the best part about shishito peppers is all you got to do is put a little oil on them, saute them, and blister them up and they're ready to eat. You can actually just snack on these things. Now, I kept these to the side for now just to show you what they look like. The rest of these shishito peppers, I went ahead and chopped the tops off the stems. I don't want to pick those out while I'm eating with a fork my poutine. If you're going to eat these by hand as a snack, leave the stems on there. It's perfectly fine. The only thing we got to do, like I said, add a little oil. And then we'll toss these and coat everything evenly. And that's basically it. I'm going to throw these in the saute pan with a bit of salt. It'll take about three or four minutes. You'll actually see them blister before your eyes. And then we'll come back with the next step when those short ribs are done cooking. All right, folks, we let our beef short ribs naturally depressurize over the last 15, 20 minutes. In that time, I made the fries in the air fryer. We blistered our shishito peppers. The only thing left to do is reveal these delicious beef short ribs. And they are looking amazing. We're gonna let some of the steam clear out. I'm gonna remove the short ribs from the pot very carefully with tongs, and we're gonna take the bones out of that, shred that meat, and then we're gonna strain these liquids to turn into a gravy. All right, folks, you just saw remove the beef short ribs from the Instant Pot, pulled the bones from that and separated the meat from the bones. We uh, took a strainer, got rid of the mirepoix veggies. We don't need those anymore. By all means, if you want to, you can leave all that in there, take an immersion blender, blend up, make a gravy that way. But I like to make a more of a thick brown gravy for poutine that's just not quite right with the veggies. So I went ahead and removed those. But like I said, if you want to use them, use them or eat them. They're perfectly edible. The next step we want to do is thicken up our liquids from cooking. Now, simply going to grab a couple ladles of the juice. And then I'm going to throw in a couple tablespoons of cornstarch. Mix that up. All right, so I've turned the Instant Pot back on saute mode. We'll pour in our slurry we just made. Give that a stir. Now, as this heats back up and that cornstarch does its thing, this is going to thicken up into a nice brown gravy full of flavors from those mirepoix veggies, that smashed garlic, tomato paste, the red wine, and the beef stock. All right, one thing I want to mention here is if your meat is not quite done and pulling apart like you like, go ahead and add that back to this gravy as it's cooking. That'll help break it down the rest of the way. You should be within a couple minutes of that being done. 45 minutes is plenty for most short ribs. If you had some big meaty ones, they may take a few extra minutes. But other than that, I'm going to leave mine out today. We're going to let this gravy thicken up. We'll come back and plate up our poutine. We got those fries ready in the air fryer, those blistered shishito peppers we sauteed, garlic herb, cheese curds, and of course our short ribs and our gravy we're finishing up. All right, folks, you just saw the ultimate poutine being made. It's a base of fries covered with some pressure cooker 
beef short ribs topped with some garlic herb cheese curds, some blistered shishito peppers, and finished off with some gravy from those beef short ribs. Let's give it a taste test and see how we did. Start with a little bit of the short rib. And it's still hot. So tender, soft, juicy, falls apart in your mouth. That's a little little bite of beef heaven right there. Stick in for a cheese curd now that the gravy has some time to warm it up. You just can't beat fresh cheese curds, folks. Those are delicious, straight from Wisconsin. You should be able to find them at your local store. Let's get a pepper, see if we hit the Russian roulette, get the hot one, or it's mild. Too mild. Let's go for round two, see if I hit the jackpot this time. Another mild one, what can I say? I say one out of 10. All right, finally those fries on the bottom. Nothing special here today, folks. I just use frozen fries. If you want to, by all means, make fresh fries. And one ultimate final bite. Fries, shishito peppers, cheese curd, gravy, short rib. All right, folks, there's only one way to describe this poutine, and that is a pure bite of Canadian heaven. They're doing one thing right up there besides ice hockey, and this might be it. So that being said, be sure to write down this recipe. Try to figure it out for yourself. You can do different meats, different peppers, different cheese curds. You can serve it over tater tots, skinny fries, fast food fries, potato wedges. There is no right or wrong way. Make your gravy thick, make it thin. It's just delicious. Whether you want to serve it up for the big game, or you just want to have a different snack after work, or you just feel like some comfort food because it's cold outside. This poutine is something that you need to get in your belly, and it's easy to do if you get in the kitchen and make it for yourself, your friends, and your family. And that being said, Mike here signing off. Until next time, folks, just keep cooking.